Good morning and thanks for joining me again on another episode of Sealed for Good. We are very lucky this morning to have Mr. Frank Ross, the President of the Master Landscapers Association of SA. Frank, thanks for joining me. Good morning and uh, that's a pleasure. I'd like to be, I'm very happy to be here. We're, we always love a guest to come along and especially someone with your experience. So before we're going to start, Frank, you got, I know you like to talk as much as I do, so we'll do this quickly. <laughs> How much, give us in one minute. Your history, your background, and, and uh, how you found yourself as the president of the MLSA. Fine, thank you. Well, good morning to everyone. Yes, so I became the president after there was a bit of a, a lull in the actual association. My experience has been in the game for probably 45 years. Started off a little guy with my father. So you were a landscaper by trade? No, we used to start it off with uh, construction and swimming pools. Okay. That's where we started off. And then from there I just progressed into landscaping and construction, which really interests me. Yep. And <coughs> as the president, I'd like to educate a lot of the young landscapers and also the whole industry to make sure that we are abiding by the legislation and also the building codes of SA and Australia. So that is our goal as the premier industry body and from that, from there we can educate the young landscapers in construction to abide by and make sure they are doing the correct things. So I'm glad you brought that up because on, on this program and a lot of the, 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 the chats we have in some of my rants at times is about the industry, the waterproofing industry yep. and how it does touch a lot of different trades and sectors of the construction piece, the whole construction envelope. Yeah. Landscaping is one that we overlook. We, there's a big focus on roofing and yes, external correct. podiums. There's a big focus on bathrooms, as we know. Yes. Uh, window reveals, etc. But then when we get to the underground applications, I think the closest we get to the landscaping piece that a lot of waterproofers and building consultants connect with are planter boxes and garden beds. We yes. forget about the basements. Correct. We forget about, like you said, about pools. Yeah. Um, we see it all the time here yes. with our teams because our clients around the country are telling us about it, particularly with, with pools and planter boxes, etc. But people forget um, earth and soil yeah, can it, hold more water than what you know, you're know you going to get on a balcony or a roof at times. That's it's, correct. It's constantly wet. So There is a big issue regarding <laughs> waterproofing in the industry, Phil. And For the landscaping. In the landscaping, a lot of people are unaware when they they are do, trying to do the best thing, but now that we are educating, they see that there is a massive void in it. The builders all leave the house, of course, and uh, that's all been constructed, especially on a new build, even on a renovation. And what we find is that uh, we have a lot of slab wetted ingress, and if I can explain that, what yeah. it is between the DPC and the Forticon, there is that 250 mil to the shuttle line yeah. where moisture can penetrate, and because as a paving contractor or landscape that comes in, they're applying all the rubble alongside that slab and then moisture just creeps into the and through the slab. We've had many issues where we've actually rectified properties and slabs where moisture has crept right through from the back to the front and they've had to vacate the premises. Mm. All the floorboards have cupped, rusty uh, board nails where the carpet is. So. We need to educate and we are really doing that and one of the products we use is C1P which our company uses as a contractor. We find that that's really, really professional and it yeah. works but we have to get it across more and educate everybody in the industry and that's what MLSA are doing. Yeah, so I appreciate that and look the groups of C1P we know is popular with paving contractors yep. and landscapers but um, you mentioned there about the builders. Yep. Are the builders, okay, you're saying that the builders can walk off site, they've, they've done their piece and, yes. and then it's not their responsibility? But a good builder is going to want to make sure that the landscape is doing their piece. And are they making that aware to the, their, their I think I their think there's a bit of a, a lack of communication there in respect of, because when the build is completed, they usually, you know, the final key has been handed over to mm. the actual uh, client. Well, then the landscaper would take in. If it's part of the package of the builder, like a project, build. like a project yeah. build, then they do the entire package. Possibly, then the builder will do then the waterproofing and stuff like that. Give me your honest assessment. Project builders in Adelaide, no names. No. But give me a percentage. How many actually doing that slab edge dampness as part of their package? Or they just say it's not my issue. And uh, they normally say it's not my issue because it's normally handled with. Uh, after the storm order or before the storm order is done, usually mm -hmm. it's up to the consumer to put that in. I would say no more than five percent that I have seen doing it. are doing it. Shit. Okay. That's, that's, that's a big number. It's a big number because all of the builds 
and all of the landscapers in there and the top end landscapers who are part of MLSA always have to do it. So always that, have what I want to say is a big number, it's a big number who's not doing it. Correct. Because <laughs> usually right. at that point of time we find that always the landscaper comes in, he's the one who will do the paving or uh, paving contractors will come in mm -hmm. or the big trend is also washed aggregate we find. Yeah. They don't do it. I can tell you now I have not seen it and uh, they were shocked to see when on a few jobs that we've engaged them that we did it all and they were absolutely shocked. Well look I know that uh, so your, your trade is unique as well in many ways because sometimes it gets sort of parked in. I've seen concreters take on the landscaping piece. But yes, we've you know, seen them all. Which and, and, and so there's, a, there's a more of a disconnect. Are those guys aware of what they need to do? You know, And so this is where we keep talking about the industry, there, there's always this disconnect between all the pieces of what happens. Do we understand? I mean, my, my, the way around that is I think the builder it should be part of the building envelope and they, they shouldn't sign off until that piece is done. I agree because a lot of people go through quite a bit of heartache. Mm. We've got a well, I know we've been involved in projects where people have pulled papers out, yes. can't walk around, no. you know, wheelchair access if they've got someone in the house that's handicapped, you know, stuck inside. These are significant issues. There's major issues we, we, as an inspector of, uh, with MLSA and also... Because you're an expert witness in courts. For yes, the we've got quite a few that we do. We've got one where the magistrate has asked us to come along on the 11th of September, it is, and it's particularly on slab wettage damp, dampness. Mm. And if they haven't got that, there's a lot of issues because moisture can then, of course, creep in to the house itself because that's not waterproof. At the end of the day, the builder will always have Sorry, right. we'll always have the Fordicon. That's yours to take after anyway, don't worry. <laughs> the, the builder will always put the Fordicon underneath, which is the orange plastic. Then they'll 200 or 250 mil above, they'll put the DPC. But there is that gap of doing nothing where if the house is on the low side, the water will creep towards that slab and penetrate if it's mm. constant moisture and they haven't addressed it. That usually lies with the contractor who's doing the paving. That's his responsibility and his, his and or her foremost duty to make sure that that is waterproof and that becomes an educational method that a lot of them yep. don't realise it's their responsibility. We've gone to consumer affairs and courts many times, it is the contractor's duties to be experienced in his field or her field in finishing that project off correctly mm. by the law and it is under the SII global standard is a law. It is a law that uh, the yeah, consumer... And, and a lot so of people don't know about it. And I, no. get, I reckon there'd be a lot of guys on site that aren't aware of the Correct. landscaper's responsibility, even that, that who aren't landscapers, just thinking like these guys just bring a bobcat in, park a whole couple of tonne of soil, make it look good, charge yeah. a packet and piss off. That's why we say, uh, well I suppose I'm pushing them LSA, but yeah. uh, at the end of the day we do a lot of workshops, especially with your product, we've done it plenty of times. and. Most of the people who are the master landscapers do know how to do this, do the slab wettage dampness coatings and, and how to do it. And they, are they, you find they're more inclined once you educate them to do the work themselves or do they prefer to say, oh, look, I'll just bring a waterproof in to do this work for me? No, we find that once we put through a <coughs> workshop, we use your products, well honestly, because we use it all the time. Once we use the products and we show them how to apply them, they're a little bit cautious of unless you're shown, mm -hmm. which is fine, yeah. but we understand that. Training is okay. yeah, training's a good thing. We put through a, a big video session, we actually do the waterproofing on a slab, on a table, and we show them how to do it, and it's quite simple, and it works effectively. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, that's a piece of cake. They do ask some questions regarding some of the overspill that comes with the foundation builds. Yeah. They usually can spill out. Well, again, those sort of answers can be done by showing a lot of photos and how to apply it but it's yeah. easily done and when, once that's done your requirements as a construction and paving duties through the actual contract mm. you've, you've applied all your work, work done and done it correctly. Are you finding landscape architects uh, following what you're um, recommending or other way around? I mean no, the landscape architect is a very specialised field as well. Yeah, AILA, which is the Australian landscape, that we yeah. we are associated okay. with them, and a lot of our a lot of our like I said, a lot of our uh, companies involved with MLSA do help uh, the AILA in respect of telling them about all the waterproofing, not only slab wetage, dampness, retaining walls, all of that sort of works is critical, mm. and they feed off each other, and it's great to see that bond between the two. Uh, organisations, I think that's important. Sometimes both the contractor or the architect 
don't know. So they'll pick off each other and help each other, and at the end, at the end result, the consumer will benefit. That's the important yeah. thing.